set there. I think all buttons are on. I got lights. I look like a Christmas tree. I got green. I got blue. I got red. I got lots of lights. So pull that away from my... Is that better? Is this better? All right. There we go. Okay. Uh, my granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter, when she was little, she said she had a an orange sheep angel in her room with lights. So maybe I'm like a... You know, <laughs> whatever that is. So uh, we're talking about deliverance today. Uh, we have a lot of preconceived ideas of what that is, and so don't freak out. Uh, deliverance is simply being free from everything that is not life. Uh, God grants us gifts. He grants us repentance unto life. He changes us. Uh, this is a very interesting season that we're in naturally. You know, we're living in the Northwest, and so we're in a part of the country where we've seen uh, plenty of rain. Uh, we have not only our usual rain, it seems like we have a little extra this year, or maybe a little extra long. And uh, I like to plant a garden, and I'm a little delayed in putting my garden in. And so we're in this season where uh, the transition between between winter and spring seems to be questionable, you know. <laughs> is it winter? Is it spring? And, and I, I really sense that the body of Christ is kind of in that season. And just in, during worship, I, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that what you think has been delay has been preparation for my way, God says. For as sure as my word comes forth, accomplishes what I send it to do, that this is a season of transition, and you're transitioning into a new season of life. You're not transitioning into a season of knowing what to do, but you're transitioning into a season of knowing who I am and knowing who you are. For I have not come, I did not send my son so that you would know what you're doing. I came, I sent my son, and I so that you will know who I am and who you are. And it's through the mystery of that fellowship, it's through the mystery of that connection that wonderful, wonderful things happen. And so get ready in your heart, get ready in your spirit, gladden your soul and strengthen your even your being to receive what I'm doing in this season, for this is a season of transition, God says. Now, I at home, I, I have an office at home these days, and my windows out my office look to a forest across the street. And uh, I can watch creation out my window and on a few Zoom meetings this week, but I've also been distracted a little by looking outside. Uh, I went out up in the mountains a couple of days ago. Um, Got to see some of my friends and saw a lot of the elk out there and, and some, some uh, creatures. But I like to watch creation in the season of new life. Romans 1 says that all of creation speaks of the Godhead. And there's something about creation. If you look closely, you'll recognize that uh, creation is not waiting to be told what to do. My trees are not reading books right now on trees. None of my trees are watching videos on trees. Uh, they're not listening to podcasts on trees. No, the environment is changing in a way that's waking up what's inside the tree. Now, you and I, we are human beings. When Jesus came, he was the only human being that existed on planet Earth. There were some human wannabes, and they recognized he was a human being, and they started following him around. And there were a lot of people that had exchanged wanting to be to becoming human doings. And those were the religious Pharisees. Those were the people who prided themselves in knowing what to do, and knowing how to act, and knowing what to believe. And when we pride ourselves in knowing what to do, and knowing how to act, and knowing what to believe, sometimes we get bound into the strongholds of what we know. 
And then the one that God wants us to know, we don't recognize him when he walks into our room. Because we measure him by allowing him who he is. Peter said believers who knew everything about the law, but now they had Christ in their life when Peter wrote the two letters that he wrote to the Jewish believers. He said to them, to those who do not believe, Jesus is a cornerstone and a rock of offense. But he says that those who do believe, he's precious. Amen. So he is a cornerstone. But that, that's not who he is to me. Because I don't know what a cornerstone looks like. He's precious to me. I cannot live without him. He's like air. If he's not in my life, if I, if I go an hour without experiencing him, I'm, I'm dead. I'm serious. <laughs> he's, he's air. He, he's food. He's water. I cannot live without him. He's precious. And because he's precious, he can shape me. He can form me. He can change me to become the likeness and the image that I was supposed to be. See, I don't know what I really look like unless I look to Him. I can't find what human beings look like by looking at a human world. I have to find a, the world of the Creator to become His creation. Now, Jeremiah said this. He says, if, if you don't know God, if you don't trust Him, if you don't want Him, you end up like a tumbleweed. You end up like a, a bush in the wilderness that just blows away. A tumbleweed, I would call it. You just blow away. You're not connected. But those who trust Him, those who love Him, those who want Him, they're like a tree planted by the river. And then they flourish in every season. Now, as I'm in my office and I look outside, I can see that this is a season of transition. Some of my trees have little buds on them. Some of them don't even have any buds yet. You know, they should by now, I think. But they just don't. It's been a little colder than usual. And some have full leaves. Some have partial leaves. Some have buds. None of them have nuts or berries or, I mean, or fruit. None of my bushes have berries on them yet. None of my trees have... There's no apples. There's no pears. There's nothing I can eat. There's nothing to shade me from the heat right now. There's, there's, there's not enough life coming off of my trees to impact my world in a summer way. I like summer. You like summer? Summer's nice. <laughs> Summer's nice. It feels good, you know? Especially in the Northwest. They wrote a song years ago, The Bluest Skies You've Ever Seen Are in Seattle. Why did they say that? Because you don't see them very often. That's why the bluest skies you've ever seen are in Seattle. And they are. Summers are awesome here. But our attitudes change in summer. In the wintertime, what do we do? We drink coffee. We, we, we get that, we deal with that you know, that sun deprivation thing by drinking coffee, right? We got coffee, we got coffee here, we got coffee there, we got drive through coffee. We got, we don't only have, we not only have a hundred names for rain, we got two hundred names for coffee. Sometimes in the body of Christ, we substitute a summer day for coffee. Well, what is it that's going to get me through this tough season? <laughs> what am I going to get? Oh, you know what I need? I need a healing. Oh, oh, I need a deliverance. I need a healing. You know, I could need all those things, but you know what? There's one thing I need that will give me all of those things in a real way, and that's Jesus. Now, my trees, when I look at my trees right now, I like to look at, the, at the, the, the winter ones right now because that's the real tree. It's got a trunk. 
It has branches, limbs and branches, trunk, limbs, branches. If I'm a tree guy, I could say, whoa, look at that hickory tree. Well, around here I couldn't say that, but I can say it in Wisconsin where I grew up. <laughs> look at that hickory tree. Ooh, there's a butternut tree. You might not even know what a butternut is, but a, that's a butternut tree. Oh, look, there's an apple tree. There's an elm tree. Oh, that's a birch tree. Oh, look, there's a cherry tree. You can tell the tree by its shape, by its characteristics. Your physical life is the tree. But you weren't born for you. You were born for your world. Right now, I've been out in the, you know, I've got grafted trees in my yard. And, oh, I just get excited about my trees. The shape of my trees right now, my apple trees, whoo, they're gorgeous. <laughs> you know, and I've got a pear tree that was obliterated by a giant trampoline a few years ago that blew from my neighbor's yard into my yard. And it, it just busted it all to pieces, and I grafted it back together, and it worked. And right now, it's gorgeous. I mean, I even went out there with some pruning shears in the colder days, and I shaped my trees. I shaped them in a way that will help them fulfill their destiny. I cut away some things that will help them bring life to their world. I trim some things back that will help them fulfill the purpose of a pear tree. Pear trees like to shoot up here and shoot up there and shoot up here and shoot up there. But if you prune them a bit, pretty soon they shoot out big plump pears. And then the world of pear eaters gets happy. I just, you know, I had some pears this morning. I canned some pears. I've got pear butter. I've got canned pears. Oh, I'm a, I'm a pear world guy. And so I like it when my pear trees fulfill their purpose, is to bring life to pear eaters. And my apple trees fulfill their purpose, to bring life to apple eaters. My big trees to bring their shade their life of even shade, their leaves even bring healing to my soul. Now, inside of all those trees that are outside, oops, there is an inner core. So you could cut, you could cut that tree, and and if you cut that tree, you'll see annual rings. Um, there's a place that I used to do a lot of fasting and praying that there's a stump that is uh, 740 years old. I know because I've counted the rings. That's just the kind of guy I am. Uh, but if you look at those rings, you can, you can get a story. I actually have encouraged myself. Days when I was discouraged, I went and talked to the, to the tree. I said, you know, how many bears scratched on your bark? <laughs> then I look really close, and I look for some difficult spots, and I say, how many forest fires charred you? And then I go, whoa. I look for some fat rings. I say, how many floods did you see? And then I look for some tight rings. I say, how many droughts did you go through? And then I say, you know, you're just a stupid piece of wood. I'm a son of God. I'm eternal. And then I feel better when I get done. <laughs> The inner core of you that goes all the way up your trunk, all the way up your limbs and out your branches is your soul. That's your soul. Now, your soul is not your brain. That's biological. Your soul is not biological. Your brain serves your soul. Your soul, your brain is part of your limbs and your trunk and your branches. It's like your inner organs and your external fingers. Your, your physical body is the tree. But there's something inside your physical body that allows you to be a human being. The soul of your being is what empowers you to, to uh, take actions in this world that are motivated by thoughts, reasoning, imaginations, emotions, and desires. And a few more things, but that's the basics. 
As long as you have thoughts, reasoning, imagination, emotion, and desires, you can make actions in this world. Now the question is, what kind of thoughts, what kind of reasoning, what kind of emotions, what kind of desires are in you? What kind is, is your soul manifesting? Now, circumstances affect your soul. The scripture, Peter said this. He said this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. He says, Beloved family, I'm begging you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among Gentiles, among people who don't have a clue about God, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, they may by your, the things that are coming off your branches and your limbs, when they see that, they'll glorify God in the day of visitation. When God comes to touch them, they'll recognize it because they saw something of God in you. Yes. Good word. Now, the enemy, any enemy, any devil, wars against your soul, your inner core, the area that is the throne of your life that determines how are you going to come out of a hard season, how are you going to live in a dry season, how are you going to live in a flooding season, how are you going to live when a bear scratches on your bark. How are you going to respond when a car crashes into your trunk? Circumstances in life are going to happen to your external being that are going to affect your internal core. Now, there's a third part to the tree. And right now, that third part to the tree is making those buds come out on the tree. Those leaves open up. Life is happening. Creation never speaks for information. Come on. Good one. Human beings are the only creation that listens with information ears. Or say, uh, human wannabes and human doo doos are the only cre creatures that listen with information ears. Every being listens with words that make them come alive. Come on. They listen for transformation words, activation words. Things that bring life from the inside of them. You see, the tree has this substance called sap. The sap of the tree is the spirit of the tree. And the sap is to get its life from its roots. And then that sap fills all of the core of the trunk. It fills the limbs, it fills the branches. And then it starts fulfilling its destiny. It starts fulfilling its purpose. It begins to reach out, birth out things that produce oxygen, leaves. It begins to, to produce things that, that clean the air. Give air and clean the air. Give air and clean the air. It gives leaves that bring healing to sick environments. And then it puts out food that feeds the hungry, satisfies the hunger, fulfills the nutrition that is necessary, that is needed for their world. Not just them, but for their world to come alive. And then it'll even drop some seeds for another generation. Yeah. But there's nothing about the purpose of that tree that lives for itself. It lives for its divine purpose. As sons and daughters of God, we're supposed to live for our divine purpose. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 28 and in Isaiah chapter 14, beginning at verse 12 in both cases, you'll find a story of a creature who didn't like himself. In Isaiah, 
He's called the star of the morning, which the Latin Vulgate calls Lucifer. But it's speaking to a king of Babylon and a king of Tyre is the other king. They're natural kings, but the prophet's really tapping into some realm of the spirit and he's speaking of a creature that preceded those kings and a creature is the root of their pride, the root of their fall. So we call him Lucifer. Uh, he's, we call him also, we know him as Satan, the devil. A Satan, the Satan. Satan means false accuser. So he's a false accuser. He's a liar. A false accuser. God didn't create a liar. A liar is a perversion of truth. A liar is a perverted creature. I'm going to explain in a second. God didn't create a devil. A devil is a perversion of a created being. Now, a devil is a is a diablo. <laughs> it means to strike diva through to to strike through. So, like we'll, we'll use a, a, a smaller devil as an example. A devil of fear. We we'll call him a spirit of fear. Okay. A spirit of fear, we call him, why would we call a spirit of fear a spirit of fear? Because he's afraid. It's a description of his personality. A spirit of fear is afraid. That's why we call him. Uh, a spirit of intimidation is easily intimidated. So therefore, a spirit of intimidation is very defensive. A spirit of jealousy is jealous. So it's very vicious in being defending itself to be jealous because it's jealous. It's a taker. It's a taking spirit. Okay, so a devil now is a personality, so we'll take the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear comes, and the spirit of fear is going to attack my soul, the inner coring, my inner core of my being, the inner core of my trunk, my limbs, my branches, the, the place that decides how I'm going to act with my trunk, with my limbs and my branches, my thoughts, my reasoning, my imagination, my emotions, my desires. Now, I have a choice. My soul must have spirit influence. That's how I was created. That's how you were created. But I have a choice. What spirit is going to influence my soul? A spirit of fear comes from the outside in. A circumstance, a fearful circumstance happens. Comes, a trauma happens. Uh, you watch horror movies for 24 hours as a dare, and you don't realize it opened the door for a spirit to attach to you, and then you, you end up finding yourself in repeated situations in life where you, a stalker tracks you. I know that's a true story. I know an individual who actually did that in college, watched horror movies for 24 hours, and then in, ended up being a minister in ministry, a pastor, and then ended up having somebody stalk him, a woman stalk him, not just one, but two different women in two different locations, situations did, because he opened his life for a spirit to impact him from the outside in. He wasn't trying to be that way. It just come, oh, got lodged. Got hooked. Got hooked. It's like, it's like going to the bathroom and you, you use the bathroom and then you don't realize the toilet paper got hung up, you know? And it's still, you, you roll, you walk out and the toilet paper's hanging out, you know? You know? So you got this big run of toilet paper hanging off your pants and you're walking around and and, and you think, it doesn't make you wicked evil. Okay? It doesn't make you wicked evil. But you know what? That toilet paper's not you. You're walking around. And if, and if you could see it, you, you might be embarrassed. But you probably would probably just have to laugh at yourself. Go find some private place that you can deal with it. Or you can pretend there's nothing wrong because you surely wouldn't make a mistake and pretend, well, everywhere's toilet paper. 
<laughs> Sometimes we get stuck with stuff in our life that is, if we really saw what God sees, it's as dumb as toilet paper hanging out the back of our pants. <laughs> it's just a situation we need to get rid of. It's just a situation we need to get fixed from. So the spirit of fear comes and he tries to crack your soul so that you accept fear is your personality. Now, it's okay to say, I feel afraid. But the devil doesn't want you. A devil of fear doesn't want you to feel afraid. He wants you to say, I am afraid. He wants you, I am. I am afraid. I am jealous. I am stuck. That's a step beyond I feel stuck. He wants your I am. If we read Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14, we'd find that there was a creature called a star of a morning. He was a reflect, refractor, reflector of the light of God, the expression of God, the Word of God. He was precious stones. He was pipes. He was rhythm, tim timbrels. In other words, he was, he was light, he was sound, and he was feel. Did you know that when God speaks to you, you see something, you hear something, or you feel something? That's how you hear. You feel something, you see something, or you hear something. This creature refracted and reflected the Word of God, God the Word, in a way that sight, sound, and feel. He was awesome. But then he saw something he didn't understand. He saw the stars of God. I believe that's you. You see, stars are not refractions or reflections of light. They're light. Did you know your father is light? And you, therefore, as a son, as a daughter of God, are meant to be light? That's good news for a dark room. <laughs> you were born to bring light to your world. To bring life to your world. There's another word for light. You can bring hope. But this creature, he saw the stars of God. It says he was full of wisdom. He wasn't full of knowledge. God did not create this creature to know things. He only created this creature to have a sense of things. Proverbs says wisdom and knowledge together create understanding. But wisdom alone is dangerous. Yeah. And knowledge alone puffs up yeah. and destroys. That's right. That's true. Everything in life is a partnership. Everything in creation is a partnership with creation. Everything about you is a partnership with God and God partnering with you. And then you partnering with one another. It's everything, everything that God does is about relationship. Everything. It's more intimate than we know. It's wonderful. Okay, now... This creature, he didn't like who he was, so he says he lifted his heart, and then it says he became a profane thing. He became something he was not. He became an ident a false identity. He became something, because iniquity was found in him. Now, iniquity is not sin. There's three things that you have in you that... that Two attributes that lead to sin. You have iniquity. You were born. You inherited iniquity. I do not believe you inherited sin. You inherited iniquity that can result in the same sin. And iniquity is a flaw. A weakness. I'm going to do something. Father, be created with weaknesses. Thank you. God, I thank you that you put iniquities in me, not so that I can hold on to them, but so that I can know I need to come to you daily so that you can visit that place. 
and transform it to a wonderful story of your love. Thank you that in my perfection there's a flaw. Because without that flaw, I wouldn't know your perfection. You are merciful. You're forgiving. You're gracious. You're loving. You're everything that I need. You cover a multitude of my weaknesses. And you never sweep them under the rug. You're not ashamed of me with my flaws. I don't need to hide from you. You come to me on my weakest day and you say, Adam, where are you at? Even in a moment when I think I need to hide from you, you come because you want to walk with me. And you're not interested in telling me what to do. You want to show me your face. Because when I see you, I become like you. So good. It's true. Ah, I love it when you walk into my room, Father. Everything changes. Thank you that you made me a creature who does not know what he's doing without you. The last thing I need to know is what I'm doing. The first thing I need to know is you. <laughs> and then when I need to know, I'll know. God gives children to young people. That's people who don't know what they're doing. And why does he give children to people who don't know what they're doing? Because love figures it out. He doesn't give children to old people. Why? They know what they're doing. <laughs> now, he makes older people have grandchildren. Those are people who have to decide that they don't know what they're doing anymore because it's yeah. all different now. <laughs> So the enemy wars against our soul. Now that same plot that, the, that caused a beautiful creation to become a Satan, a liar, the father of lies, to become a devil, his, att his attack is to strike our souls to take away our true identities. <laughs> and we're in a season where God is healing identities. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here today with the anointing of your cassia oil. Your oil that heals our breathing, heals our circulatory system, our respiratory system. Thank you that you, Holy Spirit, are manifesting in the earth right now with an oil that is the opposite of every assault of the enemy. It's totally the opposite of COVID. It's totally the opposite of everything that's trying to re mask, restrain, restrict. It heals anxiety, heals stress. <laughs> you heal. You bring liberty to joints, arthritic conditions, things that have caused us not to be able to be flexible, <laughs> Young and new, you are here, Holy Spirit, with that. You are a type of cinnamon, and you are also a laxative. You are an ex lax. You allow us to have a freedom from being spiritually constipated. You cause the things that happened to us in the past to pass from us. That's who you are right now, Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, He's here. The cassia oil is one ingredient in the anointing oil. And it's manifesting right now in the nations. Jesus is so near. He's so close to us when we call on Him. And the anointing oil of the cassia oil, you see, there are things that happen to us 
Cars crashed into our trunks. Bees made nests in our branches. Bears clawed on our bark. Things try to get us to, to be influenced from the outside in in our soul. But our soul is meant to be influenced by our spirit that is one with Holy Spirit. So sometimes things get stuck. It doesn't serve a purpose anymore. It's poison in our body. We need to poop. Holy Spirit allows us to be free. We need a Holy Spirit laxative that, that gets rid of... You. None of those things that happen to you define you. They don't define you. What's in you defines you. Why? Well, those things did not destroy you. But some things, all those things got stuck in your soul. Some spiritual influences got stuck in your soul. Now the way you hear God is by your spirit. Holy Spirit does not speak to your soul. Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit. Then your spirit speaks to your soul. That's why it sounds like you. Because it is you. It's your sap. It's your sap. It's your hickory sap. It's your butternut sap. It's your apple tree sap. It's the sap of you that allows you to bear fruit that brings life to your world. Your world is different than my world. Every one of us has an environment that we were born to bring life to. There are our natural children, our spiritual children, our natural environment, our spiritual environment, something coming off of you ah, that is meant to bring life to your world because you are a human being. You're a son of God, a daughter of God. You're a being. You're not a doing, you're a being. And when you discover who you are, it doesn't matter what age, you start bringing life to your world. People are happy when they see you. Because life comes off of you. And the enemy doesn't want that to happen, so he wars against your soul. But he's given true identity. Our identity is being restored. The cassia oil is, is healing us. Jesus said it. He said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Ha! He's anointed me to preach really good news to the poor. What is that? That's you traded your riches for poverty, but he got your riches back. You traded your freedom for imprisonment, but he's got your freedom back. You traded your, your liberty for captivity, but he got your liberty back. You traded, the enemy struck your soul and you traded your beauty for a pile of ashes. But Jesus came to give you back your beauty. But you've got to let go of the ashes. They don't define you. Jesus said, I got your joy. Oh, you traded it for that spirit of mourning. No, it was okay to say, I feel... I'm in mourning, but it's not okay to say I am in mourning. Because some seasons you just got to mourn. But that doesn't define you. You define it. Christ in you is the hope of glory. The living life of God inside of you. You're sad. Holy Spirit speaks to your Spirit, then your spirit speaks to your thoughts, your reasoning, your imagination, your emotions, your desires. And then you know what you do? You give action with your limbs. I use this little illustration activating some teenagers via Zoom in Colorado a couple of weeks ago. And I said, oh, there were five. I said, how many of you have laid hands on us on the sick? Two of them raised their hands. I said, did they get healed? They said, no. And I said, oh, awesome, great. Keep practicing. 
Keep practicing, because it says if you lay hands on the sick, they get healed. I said, for the other three of you, nobody's ever going to get healed. You didn't put your hands on them. Your limbs are stuck. These signs follow those who believe. You're meant to bring life to your world. Now, please don't get, don't get a book and try to figure it out. Don't even get one of my books and try to figure it out. It, by the way, my books are written so you can figure out who you are, not what to do. They'll, they'll help you. They're, they're beyond your head. So <laughs> let them activate your spirit. You're a human being meant to bring life to your world. In Isaiah chapter 35, I'm going to look there and then, and then I'm going to open it up for us to, to, to pray a little bit. In Isaiah 35, well, actually, let me back up a minute. In Genesis chapter 3, I've got to go there first because I've got to tell you, this is where spiritual influences of death, spiritual influence of lies, spiritual influences of deceptions, they live in dry places. Okay, actually, let me back to another scripture first before I even take it to Genesis 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3 and 4 says this. This is to you, Christian. It was to some Christians in Corinth. Now I'm going to say it to you. Paul says, I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your mind may be corrupted, corrupted from the simplicity which is in Christ. Now, Paul is speaking this to the body of Christ in Corinth. The Eve, the eternal Eve in Corinth, the body of Christ, who's married to eternal Adam. Who sits in heaven, Jesus. First Adam was an Adam of dust. Eternal Adam was a life giving Adam of the Spirit. First Adam agreed with first deceived Eve and ate from the same tree she ate from, and then it was said, man then sinned. If first Adam hadn't eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when Eve did, Eve would have been okay. Because the love of first Adam would have covered her. Because they were one flesh. But first Adam agreed with first Eve and then man, male and female, became disconnected from the sap. Paul is saying to this church, be careful because there are deceiving spirits that want you, eternal Eve. <laughs> now, he wasn't saying these things get you so that you won't go to heaven. No, he's saying these things get you so that you won't act like you, you won't be yourself, girl. <laughs> you, you won't be the eternal Eve with the eternal Adam in your life in everything. It's a spirit of deception. I have deception in my life. You want to know what it is? I don't know. It's so flippant deceiving. I don't know what it is. But every year I get more freedom from deceptions. <laughs> I have blind spots. You want to know what they are? Ask Bonnie. She'll tell you. <laughs> I know hers. She knows mine. <laughs> everybody knows everybody else's blind spots. <laughs> but everybody's got blind spots. God is not there, not in heaven saying, don't you dare have a deception. Don't you dare have a blind spot. He's saying, no, don't deviate from the simple in me so that I can free you from those things. And then he says this, for if someone comes and preaches another Jesus. Well, what's another Jesus? 
Jesus means God saves. It's not the spirit that says Jesus came 2,000 years ago that's of God. That's not the spirit. It's the spirit that says Jesus has come in the flesh that's of God. It has to confess Christ in you. That's 1 John chapter 4. The devil has no problem telling you Jesus came 2,000 years ago, but he won't confess Christ in you. And what's the witness? Love manifests from inside of you, not just for you, but for one another. Read the whole book of 1 John. When we are not loving ourselves or we're not loving one another, I guarantee you there's a different spirit at work. <laughs> when we look in the mirror and we don't like ourselves, we want to trade our identity or we start making judgments of others. We get stuck in something. <laughs> it's because we're measuring our lives, measuring one another from the outside in instead of from the inside out. And we're exchanging Jesus for another Jesus. That's true. Another God saves. I guarantee you, no deceiving spirit comes and says, Hi, I'm a different Jesus. <laughs> no, it says, this, this is your salvation. Hi, I'm your salvation. Did you know that healing is not your salvation? The healer is. Deliverance is not your salvation. No, the deliverer is. The house of God is not your salvation. No, the God of the house is. <laughs> your promise fulfilled is not your salvation. No, the promiser is. It's impossible to have faith toward a promise. Because faith works through love. And if you love a promise, we need to cast it out. Love is toward a person. Faith is always toward a person, always toward God. So if someone comes and preaches a different Jesus, or they give you a different spirit which you've not received, or a different gospel, a different good news which you've not accepted, you may well have to put up with it. You, we end up putting up with things because we treated who God really is for what we wanted Him to be. When we say, well, God, why didn't you? Why didn't you do this? Why weren't you there? How would you know He wasn't? God, why didn't you? You didn't do what you said. How do you know he didn't? He completes. I woke up in a dream a week and a half ago. I was dreaming and I woke up and I heard the phrase, everything happens for a purpose, which is commonly said when we think about a sovereign God. And then God says to me, Everything happens for a purpose, but not everything that happens is for my purpose, unless you come to the one who works all things together for good and takes what the enemy intended for evil and turns it toward good. Yeah. He said, I am sovereign in my abilities, but I'm relational in my nature. His sovereignty doesn't determine his love. But his love enables him to take his abilities and use them on your behalf. Most things, oh, I'm going to say something you're going to think is not true. Most things that happen in your life are not the purpose of God. But everything that happens in your life can be turned to the purpose of God. We've been lying to the world. They're smart enough to know bad things when they see it. And we've been telling them, no, that's really a good thing. Because God is good. You see, I believe that 
when it comes to your marriage, I believe you're in control of your marriage. But you need to get intimate with the one who owns your marriage. And when your marriage fails, it wasn't the purpose of God. It was because you didn't find God in the place that could keep life, bring life, heal life in your marriage. If you've had 15 jobs and you haven't been able to keep them, it's not the sovereign will of God. It's your work ethic. <laughs> it's your work ethic. You've accepted a different spirit. <laughs> and you need to get free. You know why? Because you, you either have a spirit of laziness, you have a spirit of sloppiness, you got a different sap is in your tree than who you're meant to be. Okay? And everybody can do something with all their heart. And it can be really good. Everybody can. But you've got to find what matches you. <laughs> I mean, come on now. If, if, if you're Down syndrome, you're really up syndrome. You've got an extra chromosome, which means you're happier than most people. So bring your happy. To your world. <laughs> Everybody else is handicapped in that area. You're not. Okay? So don't measure yourself by others, and please don't measure them by you. <laughs> Let everyone bring life to their world. I, have, you ever, have you ever seen the videos of Nick Wojcik? How many of you have seen Nick Wojcik? Come on. Nick Wojcik brings more life to more people than... than he got, he's got no arms and no legs. But he knows Jesus. And he's found the sap in the tree called Nick. That has saved probably thousands, maybe millions of lives. Especially of teenagers who are being assaulted from the outside in to not like themselves. Warring against their soul. Okay. Genesis Chapter 3, verse 14, the first curse of the fall, it says to the serpent, because you've done this, serpent, you are cursed more than all cattle, more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust. Everybody say dust. Dust. That's dry. Dust. All the days of your life, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, that's Jesus, and he, Jesus, shall bruise your head, crush your authority, and you shall strike his heel. Meaning, the body of Christ still is attacked on your foot by a serpent. And where does that serpent live? Dry places. It's not his idea. God says, wherever there's dust, you've got to be there. Where do we want to go? You have to be there. Wherever there's dust, what does dust look like? Well, unforgiveness is dust. Disappointment, that's dust. Rejection, that's dust. Shame, that's dust. Wherever there's dust of shame, a spirit of shame must live there. Wherever there's dust of fear, a spirit of fear must live there. Why did God do that? So that the dust can be changed. See, God doesn't want he, he doesn't want to He doesn't want to pull the devil down in your life. If he's pulling the devil down in your in your life, you ain't living right. You're supposed to be under your feet. Okay, well I'll pull him down so you'll be under your feet. No, actually, he wants to make it so that where your feet walk is no longer dust. He doesn't want the devil down. He wants the devil out of your life. So now, final verses. Isaiah 35. The prophet Isaiah says this in Isaiah 35, verse 3. He says, strengthen the weak knees and make, the, make firm the feeble knees. Now that's a, a phrase you find in Hebrews. Okay, it's a, it, it means... Be strong in responding to the Holy Spirit. That's your hands. And be strong in what God says. That's his word. Job chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Of a righteous man. Job. 
have strengthened many hands by your instructions. And you have strengthened the weak knees of many by your words. If that's true of a righteous man, how much more is it true of a heavenly father? Are you responding to what he says? And are you standing on what God says, his word? That will strengthen your knees so you bow to deception. It will strengthen your hands so you won't stop being a giver. A good indication that you're bound in some deception is you spend more time thinking about yourself than you do about giving life to others. If you in the day, if you in your day have a conversation with an enemy because you are a, um, because you are a victim, you have a spirit that is messing with your soul. <laughs> didn't make you wicked, didn't make you evil, just made you vulnerable to a, a, a different Jesus, a different good news and a different spirit. Didn't mean you're hooked in it, just means <laughs> trying to get you to accept a different Jesus, a different good news, a different spirit. So, God wants to free you from that. Okay, Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, don't fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Vengeance is kick butt on your enemy. Destroy the strongholds in your life that destroy you. With recompense of God, he's making it right. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer. The tongue of the dumb whoo, shall sing. The tongue of those who can't speak will speak. And waters will burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals, jackals are demons. Jackals are spirits, unclean spirits. We could even say laughing spirits. <laughs> spirits that feed on dead flesh. Ooh, they feed on dead flesh. The life that you live, you live in Christ. Christ died, you died, your flesh died. But there's spirits, jackals that want to feed on that dead flesh. But instead what's going to happen is their place where they were becomes now a fruitful place, a watered garden. There's grass, there's reeds, there's rushes. Jackals don't live there, guys. See, God wants to make it so that Unholy things can't live in us. Amen. And where did they try to live? They don't try to live in your spirit. They try to live in your soul. They affect your limbs. They affect your, your branches. They affect your thoughts. How? From the outside in. So the secret is to be strong from the inside out. A highway shall be there and a road and it shall be called highway. highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks on the road, although a fool. Woohoo! That's good news for everybody. Although a fool, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go up on it. It shall Shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. The ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing flees away. A highway of holiness. All right. Now I'm going to open it up here in a moment for prayer. And if I'm, I'm going to pray generally for everybody, and then as we Get least if you want to stay, you want to be ministered to, I'm happy to pray with you. But the, the first thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray is I'm going to put my hands on myself. You can do that if you want because I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. So are you. 
Okay? And so we invite Holy Spirit. We do not become holy by abstaining from the world, only by attaching. It's the power of life that detaches us from the world. It's not attachment from the world that gives us the power of life. Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of holiness. Spirit of holiness, I welcome you. Spirit of holiness, I welcome you. Spirit of holiness, sanctify us, set us apart, not from the world, but set us apart unto you. That will make the world set itself apart from us. Spirit of holiness, we attach to you. Spirit of life, we put our sap in you. We connect our spirit to you. Sanctify us. Let our spirits come alive. Prosper our spirits so our spirits flood our souls. So that our thoughts get healed. Our reasoning gets healed. Our imagination gets healed. Our desires get healed. Our emotions get healed from the inside out. Oh, our souls are fed by our spirit. And a prosperous soul comes because of this prosperous spirit so that our life can be prosperous. A life that gives life to our children. A life that gives life to our environment. You can confess this with me. I am not a victim. I am a recipient of the love of you, Father God. I am a child of God. Jesus, you moved into my neighborhood. You were the human being who moved into my world. And you have risen from the dead. You have conquered the dead. And you have invited me to be a testimony of your world in my world. You've made me a, a sojourner, a pilgrim, but I have a resident alien card. I have been sent to do the work of my Father in my world. My true identity is found there. I am blessed. I am a son. I am a daughter of God. Tim, could you give us a little guitar music? Just kind of in the background, just play a little bit. If there is an area in your life that you've been wrestling with that is not life giving but is consuming of your thoughts, something from the outside in, could be fear, could be shame, could be condemnation could be pride. You let Holy Spirit speak to you. But I just want to pray with you today and I want Holy Spirit to, to let the sap that brings life to your soul strengthen your knees, strengthen your hands. I want to speak over you that you are a highway of holiness. You are a highway for the testimony of Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you. Spirit of holiness. Spirit of holiness, come right now. Spirit of holiness, come. Oh, bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We're just going to begin to worship Jesus. And if you want to respond, the Holy Spirit.
prods you, stirs you to move forward, come up. I'm going to pray with you. Lift our feet from every snare. If there's an if there's a habit that you haven't been able to break, a, a pattern you haven't been able to break, be free from. God wants to bring liberty to you today. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Your name's above all names. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Names above all names. We lift you. You up in our hearts, Jesus. You're the lover of our souls. Spirit of holiness, we welcome you as the river to flow, to flow. Holy Spirit flow. Holy Spirit flow. We welcome you, Jesus, all in this room right now. Not just in the space of this room, but in our hearts. We confess that in our Father's house there are many rooms, and each of us are a temple of your Holy Spirit. Together we are a greater temple of your Spirit. We welcome you right now to bring freedom, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise. Give back from the inside out every true identity. Right now we break off shackles and chains. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Just keep worshiping him. Worship Jesus. Just keep worshiping Jesus. More of you, Jesus. More of you, Jesus. More of you, Jesus. More of you, Jesus. Every dry place, we give it to you right now. We call the dry places will become watered gardens. We welcome your grant of desire, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Spirit of the Lord. To where there have been other desires, we welcome your desire now to flood, 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 flood. We drop the gavel of heaven, pronounce you guilty of the mercy of God. And we welcome now, we flood, we flood, we flood with the life of God. We flood, we flood, we flood with the life of God. We flood with the life of God. We flood with the life of God. God. Just keep praying for us. Put your hand on we flood with the life of God. Flood, 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 flood. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We praise you, God. Oh, Lord. We turn in your direction, God. We turn to the light. Father, if there's anything in us that doesn't like who we are, we renounce it. We let it go. We thank you that you made us wonderfully created us, that the highway of holiness is inside of us, that the highway of holiness flows through us, that we are a highway for you, Holy Spirit. Spirit of holiness, flood, 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 flood. Spirit of holiness, flood. Spirit of holiness. We, we take back the night also. The, even the night, we take back the time of dreaming, the, the time of sleeping. We call that the place belongs to you. It belongs to us. We flood it with your life right now. We flood it with your life right now. We flood it with your life right now. Where worry has tried to abide, we thank you that we are not worried. 
We are comforted. We are peace. We thank you for your life right now. Holy Spirit, release your life right now. More. More, 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 more. More, 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 more. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. All across this room in our hearts, we declare that the name of Jesus is above all other names. We thank you that the manifold wisdom of God is taught to principalities and powers by the intimate fellowship of Holy Spirit. As sons and daughters of God, as beings, as sons and daughters who are spirit, soul, and body, we are a blessing to our world because our Father has sent us even as Jesus, the only begotten, was sent to bring life to this world. And we call that our true identities are being re revealed and released. And fruit, fruit, fruit is coming now in this season. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every victim mentality is being cast out. Spirit of fear is being cast out. Worry is being cast out. In Jesus' name. Thank you that we are blessed of you, Father God. We are blessed of you. We release your life right now. In Jesus' name. More, 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 more. More, 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 more. Release your life. Release your life. Release your life, God. In Jesus' name. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we magnify you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that our thoughts, our reasoning, our imagination, our emotions, our desires are, are fueled by what is inside of us. Thank you that our spirit is one with your spirit. That you, spirit of holiness, are causing us to be a place where no jackal, no thing that feasts on dead flesh can live. That you're causing what was dry to become watered, flourishing, green, life-giving. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Release your life. Release your life, Jesus. More, 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 more. More, more. Flood, 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 flood. Every dry place become a watered garden. Spirit of holiness. Flow. River of life, flow. Highway of holiness, flow. Ha, rasha, more, rasa, more, more, more. We say more of you, Jesus. More of you, Holy Spirit. More of you, more of you, more of you. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We give you glory. There's no one like you, Jesus. We thank you for your holiness. We thank you for your righteousness. We thank you for the joy of your presence. All oh, the joy of your purpose in our lives. There's no one like you, God. There's no one like you, God. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to just pray, Pastor, if you need to do something, but I'm going to invite people to stay. If you're up front, just stay up front for a bit here. Uh, the rest of you, you're, you're welcome to stay, keep worshiping, or to leave if you need to. Uh, but uh, I want to encourage you this week to let the sap, let your spirit connect to Holy Spirit. See yourself daily connecting to the Spirit. Stir yourself up. Activate the life of the Spirit within you. Do not see yourself as a victim. See yourself as a son, as a daughter of God. Let Him reveal your true identity. It will give life to your world. Fruit from you. Your leaves, your, your fruit bringing life to your world. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
I'm going to turn my microphone off so that I can kind of just hear people without 